my name is Jerry Nelson Dowdy. I'm a former public school teacher and a former tour guide at the Barry Rollins Center. And I come down now mainly to uh, uh, you know, you know, help out. Um, and uh, I'm 76 years old and uh, I'm still as much interested in history as I ever was. And I'm fi finding out new, new things all, all the time. So how far back has uh, your family been around on the shore in the Barrier Islands? We believe the 16, late 1600s. So the daddies like to say that we were the first to uh, own property and live on Hog Island at the same time. Other people live, had caretakers over there, they like Labor the Phillips or something like that. And, and there, were, there were absentee landowners, but uh, the Dowdies, uh, which was then spelled D-O-W-T-Y, uh, had uh, land there certainly by 1751 or 52. But if you go through, they've got, if you've ever been in there, these little slide out drawers and you have to know what you're looking for and you find the actual will that Major is mentioned in it. And Major is important because uh, he married, I believe, Ada Carpenter Andrews, and they had about five children, and uh, two of the two of the uh, the girls married into the Cobb family, and uh, so uh, that's how the dads are connected with the Cobbs. Sometimes you'll be confused with uh, gravestones, like Eli Dowdy. Uh, obtains property from the Willis family from uh, 1889 and he is buried there and but on his gravestone it's 1844 to 1923 but that can't be correct if you look at the 1850 census is Elijah Doughty uh, four years old so I would say it would be, have to be correctly 1846 but his wife who was another Doughty but not related she's she was in evidently in charge of the burials and everything and so she's her her birth date Margaret Elizabeth Doughty is uh 1844 so they put 1844 for both of them but but I that 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 is highly questionable because it doesn't jog up with, with the public records and and of course when they were doing the census it was in in June and it was hot and they're they're probably slopping down anything and uh but in anyway uh, so I would say Eli daddy the one uh, who's interested in interest people who collect decoys and things like that uh, would be eight, 1846 to 1923. Mm -hmm. Eli had five children and one of them was Benjamin Floyd Doughty because uh, a lot of the Floyds married into the Doughty's and, and the Duntons as well and uh, so Benjamin Floyd Doughty is my grandfather, mm -hmm. who I can remember. And my grandfather uh, was listed as a waterman. And it is sometimes you need to ask people questions. And, I, and so reading in a newspaper article, from, which is on microfilm at the Eastern Shore Public Library, it says, Ben Doughty, his brother Charlie Doughty and uh, uh, and, a, and a cousin named Bart, they were went out and got caught in the famous 1933 hurricane, and their boat was wrecked. But they were rescued. 
Some other people uh, uh, were not. I mean, like George Cobb, who uh, was supposed to be a man that was having a feud with the Coast Guard over there, and he uh, refused their warning. And, uh, you know, he says, it's my property. I'll do what I please. And, and uh, he, was the, he was that type of person. He went over there and paid the price. But uh, that was... But my grandfather never mentioned that. And so I was very surprised to find that in a newspaper article. And uh, I contacted a couple of the cousins, and they hadn't heard it either, but apparently he was. Uh, a lot of these people never really said anything. And uh, they would just sit there and be very quiet. And, uh, but Eli Doughty, he was one of these people who as a teenager, was running supplies to the south across the Chesapeake Bay because they would, uh, uh, the south uh, would purchase stuff in Europe. I, I specifically, uh, I think in this case, uh, medical supplies. And uh, it, the United States only went out about three miles. And so you could... Uh, uh, you know, have a ship anchored out there with light signals and everything, which was prearranged. Some of the local fishermen and uh, and storekeepers and so forth would go out and meet this and bring the stuff. It was off uh, to the mainland. And uh, when I say mainland, I mean North Ampanakamak County. A lot of people might think I'm thinking over across the bay. And uh, it, it would be smuggled across the bay. Sometimes it was hide in plain sight, and uh, uh, evidently I get the feeling that sometimes uh, the, the Yankees just didn't want to bother with them, but uh, uh, they they eventually uh, captured my grand my great grandfather Eli Daddy, and he was taken over to uh, the Fort Wool part of Fortress Monroe, and but he he was released. Uh, uh, the b blockade runners were one of the places that they kept them. And uh, so uh, a number of Eastern Shore blockade runners were there. And uh, they, they uh, apparently, I, I, I didn't know this, but uh, it's one of the f facts you find out. The, the Cobbs, who had come from Massachusetts, you would have think, thought they were loyal unionists or something, but apparently not because the Yankees were on their uh, their uh, their island and uh, apparently they didn't like that and uh, and uh, Nathan Cobb Sr., uh, I've been informed uh, by a lady who does from the National Archives who does research on this, you know, was arrested and taken up to Baltimore for a while. Now, uh, but Eli Daddy eventually moves to Willis Wharf by 1889 and buys a house that had belonged to the Willis family. Uh, it's where the post office is. He was one of the hunting fishing guides to these uh, people who came down here to uh, when this area was one of the wealthiest places in the United States. And that's very, very difficult to believe that we used to, North Ampernacomite County, used to be incredibly wealthy through uh, agriculture and seafood. And so he, he got to meet some of these people, probably Grover Cleveland. And uh, so, but he's remembered today almost exclusively as he was one of the famous Eastern Shore decoy carvers. And I, there was a gentleman, a gentleman I, work with who was putting together a book about decoys and which we have here at the Barry Island Center and so I supplied him some pictures of Eli Daddy in his house and, and so forth. One of the tragedies of doing anything like this is that you don't ask the right questions at the right time and and these people are all gone. I don't think there's uh, maybe but one person left who was born on, left, who was born on Hog Island. My grandfather 
Benjamin uh, Daddy Floyd was born on Hog Island uh, in 1875 and lived to uh, uh, 1962. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I, you know, I, I, at the time, I just particularly wasn't interested in a lot of family genealogy. My uh, father worked at the store at Willis Wharf, which uh, part of that building predates the Civil War, going back to, at least into the 1840s, and I'm going to try to work on a display about that here. And uh, we have the records of what people bought and it's incredible that to the little store there at Willis Wharf, which was later expanded into a two-story building, because it had been uh, a little one-story building, even when it was a one-story building, uh, it attracted a clientele for everywhere from Cape Capeville up into well up into Accomack County, and we have the records of the things that were bought, and. It, and I mean, you could you could buy a, a dangerous drugs there, uh, which they call like toothache medicine or painkiller, which is laudanum, and uh, and I'm sure a lot of people uh, got messed up on that. But it's fascinating to see what people bought, and it's fascinating that the fact that so many people were drawn to Willis Wharf, and Willis Wharf is my specialty. The original name for it was Downing's Wharf. And uh, when my father was there, he worked for William E. Johnson, who was the grandson of Edward Littleton Willis. And William E. Johnson, uh, sort of like the grand old man of Willis Wharf, and he uh, head of the Exmoor Bank, which in many uh, configurations, become, what's left of it is, B, B, and T today, but it was which they called People's Trust, and he had a lot of political connections, and uh, he uh, he was very well connected. And uh, and by the way, during the uh, 1933 hurricane, and there should be a photograph of it here, uh, a boat because it was not so much wind here as it was the flooding of the tides. It came up right up right to the store building. And there's a picture of a, a, a boat, a fishing boat, jammed up against the side of, of, uh, of Johnson's store. Dad used to talk about great grandpa Eli, uh, um, you know, as a teenager being uh, taken by the Yankees. And then Dad would hint at the fact that Eli Daddy was a master decoy carver. I wish I'd asked, asked Dad a lot more questions, but uh, to me, the, the store was a source of penny candy, and which uh, all the, the neighborhood kids used to go there to, to get it. And of course, there's no such thing as penny candy anymore, but uh, the, I would hear some, you know, stories about, you know, the, uh, the Yankees actually came there and searched in the store because uh, the people who were smuggling goods. And then a, an, an older story, which a lot of people, uh, got interested in was that there was this shipyard in the 1830s there at Willis Wharf called, and it was called, so another old name besides uh, Downing's Wharf well, was Bigelow's Wharf and it seems there was this, uh, this man named uh, George Franklin Bigelow who, came, who was looking for a place to um, set up a, um, a major commercial business 
which would include a, sh- a shipyard. He was, and so he'd been scouting that out, and he got in contact with, a, somehow, we'll never get all the details of this, got in contact with the Downing family and the Kellum family, and uh, uh, and so he had this very elaborate shipyard, which turned out these ocean-going schooners and sloops, and uh, and then he ran into some financial trouble, and uh, his shipyard plus his store burned in 1837, and so. Part of what you see there today is part of, the, of something that was rebuilt maybe in the 1840s. But I always heard about, you know, Bigelow, and then Bigelow went across the bay and opened another store and another shipyard, and, uh, and that caught on fire. And so wherever he went, he seemed to have had bad luck. So uh, a lot of times bad luck follows people in, in these old families. And uh, so I'm trying to do a display on the store there at Woolworth's Wharf because that, that, that interested me. And I have some artifacts from that. One of the great gathering places, for pretty well for any um, uh, Family it was like the French front porch, in in uh, in good weather, mm-hmm. and and people would come there and they'd sit there and um, I would they would entertain me with the I always had the Sunday papers which had the color comics in it and and of course uh, I was obsessed with getting co- comic books which were then ten cents a piece and. Uh, and some of them are very valuable if you can find the original ones. And uh, but then I would pick up a little, you know, some stories and some stuff that I probably shouldn't have been hearing. But uh, one of the sad things about this is the railroad is gone. And I used to love the railroad. And so uh, when we went up to my grandmother's house uh, in Doherty. Uh, Dad would choose you know, which way do you want to go, follow the, the railroad track or, the, or go up the seaside road. And uh, if, I, if I want to look at old houses or something like that, it would be the seaside road. But I love to see the trains. And I can still remember passenger service. But it was in decline. And uh, and so eventually they, they stop that and it's only freight service and then they'll eventually take up one of the tracks but there were tracks that went in both directions and so that comes out in 1884 and that's why they created a, um, the uh, town of Cape Charles to, to be the terminus of it by Alexander Cassatt who had the famous sister Mary Cassatt the Impressionist artist. I uh, wish I could say that she was one of the famous people that came here, but she, she was in Paris at the time. Her brother was supervising the construction of the railroad. And he, you would meet, because all these clubs and everything, and one of the jumping off places was like Watch a Prig and, uh, and, and Willis Wharf and, and I'm sure at Orster, uh, that you could, uh, you would be meeting these famous people from the creme de la creme of society. And uh, Chrysler's, Mellon's, Rockefeller's, Biddle's, Harris's, Whitman Schaefer's. I have heard that Jefferson Davis in his old age uh, uh, stayed at the Cobbs Hotel and uh, famous artists, writers, novelists, and uh, be a lot of public scoundrels and things, but uh, they all talked about, you know, going hunting and fishing, and uh, so I'd, I'd hear a lot of, the, uh, of that, but not as much as I re- would really want, want to know now. I would, uh, I'd want to know everything about it, but uh, but Willis Wharf. 
with when this it was sort of like one of the seafood centers of the East Coast, and and, and some of the old families uh, who conducted the the Walkers, the Terries, the Ballards, and Bowens, and so forth, uh, they. They, they had flourishing businesses there, and, and actually they do today. And so, so that's a holdover from that. But uh, it's, it's uh, very little left of old, very old time Willis Wharf. A big, the mail came down twice a day and uh, came on the train. And people just loved to study the Sears, Roebuck, and Montgomery Ward catalogs. And I mean, I would say that the two, two books that most any family had uh, were like the Bible and uh, the Sears catalog, and, and, uh, and which was consulted more the Bible or the catalog, I, I don't know. But, and, and we did have uh, local newspapers, and uh, which I didn't pay much attention to it at the time because they had in there, each little town had its own little column. And it w when I first went to college there, Paris would send, send me a copy of the newspaper, and people would pick that up and say, you know, what is this? And, uh, you know, like Mrs. So-and-so visited uh, Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so for Sunday dinner, and people would, I'm sure, religiously go here on the shore, would go over that, find out who was, who was seeing whom, and, uh, and if you were in an area that didn't have that, uh, like you're meeting city kids and so forth, uh, the, you know, they put, they thought that was pretty strange, but uh, the people here would, you know, religiously go through that. Church attendance was up a lot, which was really really uh, big. It's in great decline now. They had very like in X War, they had very nice stores, even department stores, and. Uh, uh, and of course, and to some people, a big big deal would be to take the train from Exmoor to go down to Cape Charles and, and shop there, and uh, where they had also very nice stores. Uh, a lot of the people uh, belonged to these fraternal lodges. Dad you know, was in the Masonic Lodge, and uh, so that that's understand it in decline. Your schools, it, it was more individual attention, and hardly anything, you know, it was a uh, computer was something that uh, was just a, a dream or something. But I mean, there was when I. Went with the schools in Northampton County, I, you uh, you didn't have any of that, and so uh, you had your favorite teachers and, uh, and 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 your friends and so forth, and um, one of the things that, and this may seem morbid to some people, but. I enjoyed perusing whole cemeteries, and still do. And uh, the uh, particularly when you see some out in the field, and there's no house around it, you knew there had to be a house there, and because people until they got your your uh, big public cemeteries like at Bell Haven and Hancock and uh, and uh, Accomack and Cape Charles, uh, you uh, you buried your people on uh, your own land. And uh, I very foolishly tried to restore uh, two of these, and uh, it was just 
unless it's on your own land, you're really better off just leaving it alone. But I was at the time I was very interested in doing that. And particularly the one where my grandfather, Eli Daddy, was buried. My great grandfather, Eli Daddy, was buried. And well, I taught public schools for 30 years. And then I found that this was going to be open, where I could talk to people individually about uh, the uh, Eastern Shore history. And uh, since I'm associated with the Berry Islands, uh, and the Dowdies are one of the oldest you know, families in the county. Uh, I was glad to be a, a part of that. And so, and so I'm unable to do what I used to do. Uh, so I have to hobble around right now. But uh, uh, the, the pure joy of it was to get a group of interested people sitting around and you could tell them old stories a lot of some of which I was told never to talk about, but but I do it sometimes, and um, the uh, we have have a, have beautiful displays here, and uh, and and there will be more, and so this seems to be a major success. And uh, I hope it will continue that way. But uh, I, I do miss being down here every day and meeting new people and telling them about Eastern Shore history because we've got a lot of it. I mean, I mean, we have the oldest continuous public court records in the United States, 1632 old style calendar. And uh, it's absolutely fascinating if you will read through some of these wills that uh, people uh, left. But the big thing to me was every summer we would go and st stay a week with my aunt and uncle over in Newport News, and then we would and we would get up real early in the morning and be down there, and so. Uh, you, had, you got in a line to get all, on board these things. And uh, the, uh, it was beautiful watching the, when the, in the dark when the ferries come up and circle around and go through the gap in these, oh, these concrete ships and then put in. And, and so then you ride over uh, and the sun, the sun rise. It was, it was a beautiful experience. And then uh, my aunt and uncle were over in Newport News. They were interested in, in, uh, in history. And so we got to go to Jamestown, Yorktown, and, uh, Richmond, and uh, Williamsburg, and, and, and the museums and things over there, and, which I thoroughly enjoyed. That was the thing not to be missed each, each summer. <music>